risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, we are gathered today in the name of Christ to give thanks for James, 10th Bishop of the Diocese of Edmonton, to celebrate with her the ministry that we have had the joy of sharing over the past 13 years, and to thank God for her faithful leadership. And so let us join together in prayer. So, my dear friends, you think that you're going somewhere, but you're not. This smudge, as we light this smudge, you are ordained bishop to be bishop forever. You're ordained priest to be priest forever. You're ordained deacon to be deacon forever. Now the most holy of all steps of that being an undisputed elder in our community. Where not where you've been is important, is the gifts that continue to be given to you by the Creator. The one bestowed upon when we first heard all the birds. My brother, my sister, all that is me and you, all the ancestors that pour around you, all the ones that whisper your beautiful name every day, may you continue to be inspired by those great teachings that the great creator has given you. So this smudge is not a smudge of a goodbye. It's a smudge of hallelujah, welcome, because you, Jane, are a gift to your family as we go in the first generation of the smudge. You've been a gift to the priests of this diocese as we go to the next bit of, the, of your life. And you're going to be even greater gift as you continue to speak your truth. Because you and I have one thing in common. <laughs> we always have to say it. <laughs> we always have to speak that truth. So may you continue to live in the courage of this confession that we make today. This smudge clarifies, purifies, enriches, and gives new gifts. I know I saw an image of you putting your crozier down. Now you pick up new gifts, new life, new inspirations. So you are an undisputed elder forever. May this smudge, as we come to know you, great creator, as we know all the strengths that you bring us, as you have honored your dear beloved Jane, from her feet that walked in places where only she could walk, and her hands and only ministry that she could give, and her only eyes and sight that only she could give. And we strengthen her for the next part ahead. As she walks in strength, strengthen her back as the winds continue to push at it. Welcome all that she is and says. We ask to bless her and keep her. Great Creator, we give you thanks for the bounty of your spirit. We give you thanks that you poured love and strength and giftedness on Jane, your beloved. We give you thanks that through her ministry, so many people have heard the gospel. So many people have felt healing. So many people have felt that they are belonging and members of this church. May you continue to bring these gifts to her. May her hands still reach out in compassion. May her feet continue to strengthen all those that she walks to. And may she continue to be the most important job, cook them. Cook them to children, this generation and generations to come. We ask you to bless her and keep her.
And we smudge those of her family who continue to uphold her, those of her colleagues and friends that continue to seek her, those in the ether world that continue to hear her words, those in this community, those of this leadership, most of all, you, creator of all. We give thanks in this day. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Tongues. 
All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into the one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of the same spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It was on the Feast of Pentecost in 2008 when Jane was consecrated Bishop of the Diocese of Edmonton. And there could not have been a more appropriate feast to mark the beginning of this Episcopacy. With the Holy Spirit descending and the good news of God, being heard in a multitude of languages, so that the love of God could be understood and shared and carried out to the ends of the earth by all who were there to hear. The Feast of Pentecost has animated the last 13 years in this diocese to love deeply and to proclaim God's love in word and action, not just within the bounds of the church walls, 
but to everyone we meet, knowing that God's love was never meant just for a few, but always for everyone. The scripture passages that we have today were combined from this first service of consecration in 2008 and from Bishop Jane's 10th anniversary as our bishop. And they are beautiful in the images that they have that remind us that God's love is never small or stale, but always strong and full of life and truth. Oak trees with roots that run deep, and that allow a tree to stand tall in righteousness, proclaiming healing and justice, freedom and comfort to those who mourn. These readings remind us that to be about the work of God is to proclaim God's love as it needs to be heard with those that we encounter. It can never be one set message. We have to meet and know one another. We have to be in relationship meeting people and listening to their stories, and hearing where God is meeting them. So this first passage reminds us that to speak the truth in love is sometimes the gentle washing away of tears, and other times it is standing firm in the protection of others. This is what it looks like to be filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Our gospel reading continues with these beautiful images, but now with the thirsty being welcomed to come and to drink living waters, and the believers being taught that they are the living waters, that they are the ones who are called to live lives that will flow with love, that will flow with how people will understand that they are loved by God. They are to be the living water of God, for the sake of all who they would meet. We live in a city with a river, for those of us who are in Edmonton. And this river, over the last two weeks, has been changing. I drive over it almost every day. And it has been cracking and changing color. And finally, now the spring has allowed us to see the waters flowing again, moving and revealing its life. When we think of a river, when we think of this river that we know so well, it is always moving and it is changing. It has to change so that the water can move more freely. This should form our imagination as we think of all who are welcomed to come to the water to drink. That this water of life is for us all and it is to flow from the hearts and lives of those who follow the way of Jesus so that everyone can hear and see the love of God that is for them. To remember that this water is meant to flow freely and with abundance, that there is no need for anyone to be thirsty. God calls us all to these lives of love and truth, sustained and enabled by the work of God's own spirit, each in our own way, in our own places and contexts, all of us are filled with this same spirit and called to be a part of this good work, called to be reminding people what God is truly like, that God is filled with love for us. Over the last 13 years, Bishop Jane has been pointing us and reminding us and helping us to remember who we are and that this is what we are called to do, reminding us of the love we have received from God, and how that love is always meant to be shared. She has called us to be people who love our neighbors and our neighbors' neighbors, to remember that the church exists always to be grown, because the love of God continues to flow into this world, and God continues to welcome us to be a part of God's work. Bishop Jane has reminded us that we are all gifted, and has celebrated when we join in the work of God, as we see need and opportunity in our daily lives. And so today, it is only right to be reminded of the gift that this leadership has been, by all being reminded and renewed in our lives of faith in Jesus Christ, having our eyes and our hearts open to how God is continuing to call us to live full lives in God's Spirit. 
looking forward to how we will continue to share the love of God in the days and the years to come.
For the past 13 years, Bishop James has followed the way of Christ by serving as Bishop of the Diocese of Edmonton. Bishop James, during this time, you have faithfully led us into deeper relationship with God and with our neighbour, emphasising the importance of mission and discipleship and the expansive love of God for all of God's creation. You have called us to remember that God is not done with us yet. We give thanks for your faithful ministry and for the love and the care that you have given to us in order to follow this fall of Jesus on your life. I thank you, the clergy and laity of the Diocese of Edmonton, my family and friends, for the love, kindness and support you have given. And I trust that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. Let us pray. And so in our prayers we give thanks for Bishop Jane for her ministry within this diocese. Heavenly Father, we pray for her as she continues to share the great love of God in new and exciting ways and finds great joy in your continued service. as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, of glory. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, of glory that God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That God will provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That by God's power, war and famine may cease through all the world. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That God will reveal the light of God's presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That God will send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon God's people, so that we may bear faithful witness to Jesus' res resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And always with you.
pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you, as you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who placed their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church, Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we died with you on the cross. And now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, so that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the Church, and in Christ Jesus, for ever and ever. Amen. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will. And working in you, you can do what is pleasing in God's sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Come on, Grandma, you got to get those kids. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, my name is Archdeacon Lee Bizanson. Uh, I've been asked to uh, to be the uh, hi Neil, the uh, MC, as it were, for this uh, little get together right at this particular point. And uh, and I think a most appropriate way to begin always in church land is with prayer. So may I ask you please to bow your heads in prayer, and if where you're watching at home, bow your heads in prayer. For everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to come and a time to go. Yet the Spirit blows where it will, and for those who are led by the Spirit, they must follow. God has blessed this diocese with 13 years of service from Jane Alexander. She has been our bishop, our shepherd, our inspiration, our co-worker in Christ, our teacher, and our friend. With joy and sadness, we mark and celebrate the ending of her ministry with us as a bishop. But we must do so with thanksgiving for all that she has come to mean and for all that she has accomplished. As there is indeed a time for every purpose under heaven, today we bid our most heartfelt farewells while we send you our most fervent prayers that for whatever purpose still to come that you, Almighty God, will hold Bishop Jane, her family, in the hollow of your hand and support and sustain them all into your future. In your holy name, we ask this today. Amen. And so I've been asked to, uh, to give some opening remarks as we today celebrate 13 years of Episcopal ministry and leadership of Bishop Jane Alexander. 13 years and I've been given five minutes. What to do? What to say? Well, how about this? Thirteen years ago in 2008, a Big Mac cost $4.09 fully loaded. A liter of gas at the pumps cost you a buck thirty-five per liter. Hmm. Thirteen years ago in 2008, Daniel Day-Lewis won the Oscar for Best Actor in There Will Be Blood, which is, sounds like a lot of synods that we probably attended over the years. The best picture was my biography, No Country for Old Men. <laughs> Thirteen years ago, the Detroit Red Wings won the Stanley Cup, the Calgary Stampeders won the Grey Cup, and if you're still interested, the Philadelphia Phillies won the World Series. And Connor McDavid turned 11. <laughs> and 13 years ago, a certain Anglican diocese in central Alberta called Edmonton, we won the best draft lottery ever. Not a lottery pertaining to hockey, but the lottery of life. Because we won a woman with a vision. We want a woman with a desire to make that vision our shared story and our collective future. Thirteen years ago, Jane, you were elected our bishop, and what a ride it has been. In that thirteen years, Bishop Jane passionately championed the causes of reconciling relationships with our indigenous brothers and sisters, of advocating and working tirelessly as the co-chair of this city's campaign to end homelessness and poverty for all people who are so afflicted and affected. She challenged us all to become more environmentally concerned and, in fact, proactive in being better stewards of our good earth. 
beginning with rather simple things as getting rid of styrofoam cups and plates at parish potlucks and coffee hours, to enticing us to explore into the amazing world of LED lighting and methodologies of solar energy. Bishop Jane's vision and pastoral influence was destined to reach beyond the geographical boundaries of this diocese when she initiated and nurtured a blossoming and loving relationship with the Diocese of Bouye in Central Africa. She exemplified a penchant for prophetic ministry as she tirelessly took her place amongst the councils of both the National Church and the worldwide communion. And she was known as a voice that if it was not always listened to, it was nonetheless a voice that would not be denied, that would not turn away, and that would always speak the truth. I think our bishop revealed some of her pastoral depth and scope in her ongoing support to a ministry that is very near and dear to my heart, the rather specialized world of ministry of the Canadian Forces military chaplains who practice their ministry in three of this nation's largest bases within the ge geographical region of the Diocese of Edmonton. Base Edmonton, of course, Four Wing Cold Lake, and of Wainwright. In fact, Bishop Jane was so interested in the military that she had me arrange, there'll be no names here, but she had me arrange a day in the field in Wainwright at the state-of-the-art Canadian Maneuver Training Center, which trains and prepares our soldiers and the chaplains who minister to the soldiers to go through all of the types of scenarios and situations that they might expect to encounter when they deploy to places like Afghanistan. It was a typical Wainwright day, cold, blustery, dusty, but that did not dampen the ardor and the passion and the sense of adventure of our bishop. She put on some camouflage green paint. I certainly wish I had a picture. <laughs> she talked and moved among the officers many officers, the men, and particularly the chaplains. And to prove what a trooper she was, she was even willing to eat a military lunch out in the field. These things are called MREs, meals ready to eat. Yeah, sure. In an aluminum bag, you drop it into a boiling pot of water, and then you pray and pray fervently that you're not going to suffer tomain, food poisoning, or any other affliction. Bishop Jane showed what a compassionate person she has always been when she held up Salisbury steak, my favorite, and I had held up some creation from the depths of a garbage dump, and she willingly took it off my hand so that I could have my beloved Salisbury steak one more time. What a trooper. Five minutes go by very quickly and I fear that there is so much more that really could and should be said and perhaps we will hear a little bit about that from others who will speak today. Jane, perhaps amongst all the things that you accomplished in your 13 years with us, your greatest achievement, and I dare say one that sometimes probably kept you awake at night and sometimes even gave you momentary doubt and I won't say loss of faith, was that you dragged each and every one of us, your clergy in particular, but I think the entire diocese, you dragged each and every one of us, some of us kicking and screaming perhaps, into looking at, at a mindset and a practice of ministry that would leave behind forever the notion that insular, inward-looking ministry of maintenance was the right and way to, proper thing to do. You led us. You led us into seeing that the church 
must be about looking outwards, must be about proclaiming the gospel, making disciples, baptizing believers. You took us out into the world and beyond. For that alone, simple words might not be enough to express our gratitude. In ending, as I must, I find myself thinking of an expression that I learned back in the dawn of time, which was for me 1978, the summer of, as I was a seminarian doing five months of ministry on the West Coast First Nations village of Kinkham Inlet. I was told by the chief of the village at the time that there was no word in the Kwakuta language for goodbye. Rather, the preferred customary term was elakasla, which means until we meet again. Since I really do stink at saying goodbyes, let me just say to you, elakasla, Bishop Jane Alexander, until indeed we meet again, and thank you. 2008 was a great year. And now I'm going to, it's my pleasure to invite uh, Dr. Tim Alexander to come forward. I hope not to offer rebuttal, but to offer words on behalf of the family. Speaking for a moment as a family member, it's been an exciting ride. Not just from Jane first became bishop, but actually from many years before that, from when she was first ordained as a deacon. For me, it was listening to her sermons, finding them wholesome, practical, challenging, and always based on a gospel. The end of every sermon will be a call to quiet reflection, and then, just in case that felt too comfortable, to get out of your pew and act. Right now, today and always. On a personal level, in your community or in the wider world, if you see something that isn't right, go out and help fix it. Seeing her helping a parish through its day-to-day -day problems, conflicts, decisions, and guiding it towards unity and an outward-looking engagement has been inspiring. And then, elected as bishop, not a parish, but a diocese, what then? So many challenges, not only those of a large institution, but also the wider challenges faced by the church and also by the very concept of religion in a changing world. There are so many voices clamoring in the media, claiming to represent Jesus and Christianity, but giving so many very different views as to what a Christian is. And some views so deeply harmful both to the church and humankind. As bishop, Jane has challenged us all to ask, what would Jesus really do and say? How can we make the light of the church shine out in a dark world? In Edmonton, we see the homeless and the marginalized on our streets, and we have seen Jane as bishop publicly and effectively helping lead the fight to eliminate homelessness and poverty. Equal marriage, potentially so dividing for the church. How to guide this diocese in unity towards Christ's love. The truth and reconciliation process. How to make it more than just words the links with the diocese in Burundi, to daily 
pray with, work with, and learn from our brothers and sisters across the world. I could go on, but at the end, the summary would always be the same. You have led well in difficult times, and you have always led us to where we should be. You have made me, your family, and all who have truly known you proud of you for your faith, leadership, and determination. We thank God for all that you have achieved. I'm going to invite Alex now to come forward to share some correspondence from the mayor's office. It is my pleasure to read a letter that was written to Bishop Jane from our mayor, Don Iveson. I feel like you guys are besties because you should see this. It's so sweet. To the right Reverend Bishop Jane Alexander. Scratch that, Jane. On behalf of a grateful city council and the people of Edmonton, please accept our heartfelt congratulations on your retirement from the Anglican Diocese of Edmonton. With certainty, I can say that co-chairing the End Poverty Edmonton Task Force alongside you in 2014 and 15 remains one of the highlights of my time on City Council. Your commitment, passion, and determination was and continues to be a North Star for Task Force members, me included. I hope you take pride in End Poverty Edmonton's ongoing work with its partners in fulfilling the task force's mission, ending poverty in a generation. Your service and leadership have always been defined not only by your work within the Anglican Church, but also your work in leading and convening faith communities on a wide variety of life and social justice issues. Edmonton's faith leaders have remained way ahead in their response to COVID-19 since the pandemic's early days do, in no small part, to your advocacy for community and congregations' well-being, health, and safety. Take a bow for your history of service to Edmontonians. As you step back from your current leadership position, you have left an infectious belief with us. Not only should we make the world a better place, we really can make the world a better place too. May you find time post-pandemic for more live concert experiences and cherish time with family members. Best wishes and thank you. Your tr yours truly, Don Iveson, Mayor of Edmonton. I am so grateful to have gotten to work with you and learned from your leadership example. At this point, I would invite you to direct your attention to our screen. We have uh, a, a video presentation, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this. So right over here. Well, thank you, everybody, so, so much. I'm feeling a, a bit dehydrated, actually, I have to say, so <laughs> I'll do my best. But oh, my goodness. It's been 13 years since I was elected and that I have served as your bishop. And I leave you with so many memories and celebrations of what we've done together and in a spirit of great thanksgiving. Confirmations and ordinations and baptisms and parish celebrations, synods, the centennial, the TRC hearings, conferences, blanket exercises, learning circles, there's just too much. To mention and I'm so sad that we can't all be together in person but please know you're always going to have my love and my support and my prayers today I really just want to share a few last words with you and I want to thank you for all your kind messages over the last month oh my gosh we've had an exciting and a busy time together haven't we 
I pray that I have been faithful to the vision and hopes of the diocese and that we've all been following God's will together. When I look back, I have to say it's the day-to-day -day growth of folk as disciples that's been the most exciting thing to see. Worship services, absolutely, but also messy churches, VBS programs, food programs and food banks, the tip-top bakery, the chaplaincies, the ACW, Casio, community gardens, common ground, a common word, end poverty Edmonton, camps, intentional communities, so many ways in which we've all been finding our voice and our ministry as followers of Jesus, men and women, boys and girls, all of us together finding ways to serve and to show our faith and show how we love. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, isn't it? There's an African proverb that says, you can't pick up a pebble with one finger. So as much as I really appreciate and thank you so much for the kind words today, you can't build a church with one person either. Anything we have done, we have done together. And if anyone is to be singled out today, well, it's not gonna surprise you when I tell you it had better be Jesus. I remember when Alan Hirsch visited our diocese a few years ago, he said something that stuck in my mind. He said, ever since the mission and ministry of Jesus, God has never stopped calling for a movement of little Jesuses, little Jesuses, to follow him into the world. And so our diocesan vision to proclaim the gospel, to make disciples, to further the kingdom, it's actually a call to all of us to be little Jesuses, to get out there, to minister in Jesus' name so that people will grow to love, but also to trust the church, to see it as a safe and a wonderful place where they will experience the power of God's love in action. And having experienced that love, I always pray that they want to become disciples themselves and they'll be drawn even closer to God and become Jesus' friends. And I hope that that's your prayer too. So what about me? What's happening here? Well, I have to tell you, at Salisbury Cathedral in the UK, there's a brilliant, brilliant uh, statue of Mary in the grounds, and it's a statue by a woman called Elizabeth Frink. And Mary has her back to the cathedral, and she's striding out in the direction of the city, and she is quite haggard. Her rib cage shows, if only. <laughs> She's not a beautiful young woman anymore of the Annunciation. She's not the grief-stricken mother of the Passion, but she is a determined older woman with a mission to proclaim the gospel in the city. Now, trust me, I am no Mary, but I promise you that I will continue as a determined older woman. I will faithfully proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ here in this place in whatever ways I can. And I ask you, all of you, all of you here and all of you at home, please promise me that you'll do the same. So before I turn into a crying wreck, and it's very close, hanging on by a thread here, folks, here's what I actually want to say to you. Really, I just want to say thank you for taking chances with me, trying to see things in new ways. Thank you. For getting behind the Rural Ministry Initiative, the Indigenous Ministry Initiative, the New Ministries Funding, the REACH Campaign. Thank you. For putting the marks of mission into the constitution of this diocese, and making gospel-focused social justice central to who we are. Thank you. For the humility to enter ever more deeply into working for peace and reconciliation. Thank you. For loving Bishop Sixbert and the people and parishes of the Diocese of Bouye as your brothers and sisters. Thank you for working towards being ever more inclusive and loving the church as Jesus' family that shows that every child of God is welcome, is loved, and belongs. 
thank you. To the clergy, to the lay readers, to the lay evangelists, the hospital visitors, the pastoral care teams, the Sunday school teachers, the youth leaders, to every single one of you in your parishes across this diocese who are trying to become a little bit more like Jesus, thank you. And to my family, Tim, Mark, Sarah, Rachel, where is he? Peter, to Amanda, to Ryan, to Graham, to Jennifer, to Olivia, to Zoe, to Jackson, to Ben, to Liam, and to Molly, and to my sister Anne. Thank you. Thank you for loving me through this ministry for being so understanding all the times I had to be away or when I had to rush off at the drop of a hat, a very pointy hat, let's say, to be doing other things when you wanted me to be with you. Thank you for sharing in all the joys and the concerns of Episcopal ministry. I love you all to bits. And so for all of you, it wouldn't be right if I ended without giving you some homework. She can't give us homework. She's not our bishop anymore. I can if I wrap it up in a blessing. So I'm going to end with a non-traditional blessing. It's by Sister Ruth Fox, OSB. And I want you to hear the words as a rallying call to you, and I hope an encouragement to your lives in Christ. Here we go. May God bless you with discontent, with easy answers, half-truths, superficial relationships, so that you will live from deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, abuse, and exploitation of people, so that you will work for justice, equality, and peace. May God bless you with tears Tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you will reach out your hands to comfort them and change their pain to joy. May God bless you with foolishness to think that you can make a difference in this world and that you will do all those things that other people tell you simply cannot be done. And if you have the courage to accept these blessings, then God will also bless you with happiness because you will know that you have made life better for others. With peace, because you will have worked to secure peace for others. With laughter, because your heart will be light. With faithful friends, because they will recognize your worth as a person. These blessings are yours, not for the asking, but for the giving, from the one who wants to be your companion, our God, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So, goodbye, my dearest friends. It has been an honor and a joy. Thank you. We may end up inviting you back up here in about two and a half nanoseconds because this is a time when we have a couple of gifts that we would like to present to you in our appreciation. I'm going to invite the Reverend Canon Chelsea Bowman, who is the Canon Pastor of Rural Ministry, to come forward firstly.
Bishop Jane, on behalf of the rural clergy in the diocese, we want to um, present to you this token of our gratitude um, for your care and compassion, for your support and encouragement, um, for the times that you have challenged us to take risks and reach out beyond ourselves um, to show others God's love, all the while demonstrating to us through your life and ministry what God's love looks like, what it feels like, and what it sounds like. So on behalf of all of us, please accept this gift, and we hope that when you look at it, it may remind you of the celebrations, the relationships, and the ministries that we have with you. Oh. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> it's not a kiss. <laughs> should, should I open it? Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. I need some help. Small people, small people. Come on. Come and help me. Ben, I can see you. Jackson, Zoe, Livy, Molly, probably too small. Come on. Come and give me a hand. Yep. Okay. Are you good at ripping? Okay. Rip, rip, rip. Is it in a box? It's in a box? Oh, my goodness. It's in a box. Rip. You never know. I know. You never know what it might be. Chelsea, you wrapped it very well. Yes. Well, this for me, but we can share it. How's that? Can we share it? Ben, can you rip? Can rip it off. No. A box? Oh my that goodness. Is, that is a box. Yep. That's not a box. It is a box. I know. Um, what's Here we go. your name? My name? Lee. Oh, my name is Stephanie. Oh, it's past the parcel. Here we go. Libby. Rip. Rip. What is it? What is it? Oh, look. It's pictures. It's pictures. Isn't that lovely? Pictures of what you see in our birthday. Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much, everybody. It's special. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks. Should I give it to Papa? Okay, let's give it to Papa. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, Bishop, you must come back up. It's my pleasure to uh, bring, ask Alex to come forward, our, our Dean and Diocesan Administrator. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm not looking at her. Okay. okay. <laughs> Bishop Jane. Alex. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being faithful and for being our pastor and our shepherd. And it is my, I get all the great bits today. It is my pleasure to let you know that the gift of the diocese to you is 14 going on 15 and probably more wells in Boye. Oh, um, uh, thank in, you. in your honor and in recognition of the good work and the relationships that you have built over 13 years. And so from across the diocese, uh, we have been raising these funds and we have well over enough for 14 already and we are continuing to raise funds for the rest of the month Thank and you. so those will go to the diocese of Bouillet but you can't also go home empty-handed <laughs> and so we bring you this from this blasted church that we love <laughs> a bottle of wine with a bishop getting a tattoo and I would say think about it <laughs> give it a chance <laughs> and flowers oh thank you Thank you very much. This will help with the dehydration. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to close our time together in prayer. This prayer takes the shape and the form of a limerick. Jane. 
You started on this journey so many years ago, and now it's time to leave behind dear friends you've come to know. You sought divine direction and a heart to do his will. Your work became your passion as you used your gifts and skill. You set the highest standards for yourself and others too, showing honor, pride, and dignity. We saw the best in you. So do not waste one minute, one minute more wondering about things that might have been. Rather, watch the seeds you've planted grow and feel his peace within. We bid our heart, most heartfelt farewell while we send our most fervent prayers that whatever purpose still to come, that you will hold Bishop Jane and her family in the hollow of your hand. We pray God keeps you safe and well wherever you may turn, surrounded by your loved ones to live out the dreams you've earned. And in the quiet of your heart, May you hear God safely say, my good and faithful servant Jane, I'm so proud of you today. And all that needs to be said to that is amen and amen. amen. Friends at home, friends here, this concludes our ceremonies this afternoon. I'd like to thank everyone who has taken a part both in the liturgy this afternoon and in this presentation as well. Thanks to Chris, is it, behind the scenes who made this all possible. Uh, I, I have so much t support, uh, admiration for your technical support, I can barely turn on my computer. I would like to also say a word of special thanks to Tim and the family. You allowed us to have a kind of monopoly on your lovely wife and mother and mother-in-law, grandma, for all of these years. So thank you all for everything that you allowed us to have with her. So as Bishop Jane would always say at the end of meetings, safe home to each and every one of you. Thank you. <laughs>